This Vietnamese woman just opened up the world's first sports bar that solely focuses on playing women's sports on the TVs. Guys, a lot of people on the internet are doubting it. However, let's talk about why it might just be a great idea. Yeah, this is going viral in a couple circles on the internet right now. Andrew, Jenny Wynn used to play college basketball at Clark College in our home state of Washington, and uh, she saw a gap in the market. She went to sports bars. She could find no women's representation on the sports screens, so she decided to open up the sports bra in Portland, Oregon, Andrew, and it's going viral right now because in her first year of business, she did a million dollars in revenue. Right, so already she is proving the doubters wrong, but I do want to talk about what a lot of people are saying. A lot of people are accusing it of being discriminatory. A lot of people obviously support it. Now, we want to talk about it all. However, I do, before we get into the comment section, I want to talk about why I think it's going to be a successful business, so please hit that like button, check out other episodes of the Hot Pot Boys. All right, Andrew, why is the sports bra in Portland, Oregon, we'll just pop up the Yelp page right here going to be successful. Okay, so number one, when it comes to opening up a bar, every bar has its crowd, it has its tribe, it has its niche. Okay, some bars are themed a certain way. A Knicks bar, Nets bar, a Seattle, a, a, a Portland Trailblazers bar. You know what I mean? Like, bars have themes. Maybe they're certain, uh, focused around a certain sport more, like we show all the hockey games. You know what I mean? Right. So I think that this bar is very specific in playing women's sports, and they are going to find their crowd very, very quickly, and that is number one to running a yeah. success. Bar. I mean, it makes sense. Like you said, you know, you got hockey bars, you got NBA bars, you got MLB bars, you got uh, every single sport has their own bar, football, soccer, obviously Buffalo Wild Wings tends to be more NFL centric, but they cover everything. Yeah, there's Asian bars, Mexican bars, Dominican bars, like, you know, Caribbean bars, whatever you want. So number two, women's sports, although still not viewed nearly as much as men's sports, we understand that. It's only 5% uh, of the sports being shown on American TV are women's sports. Yeah. Um, women's sports in general, though, the past few years has gotten way more coverage and more interest. For example, this past NCAA Women's Basketball Championship game, LSU versus Iowa, that broke the record for most viewerships of that women's championship game ever. Right, you're talking about the Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark thing. That was the first time where I saw people on TV really take it serious and debate it like it was just any other men's sports. Yes, yeah. and it helped that there were two big stars. You know, it sprinkled in a little race war in there, but uh, we'll get into that <laughs> later. But anyways, guys, there's a lot of women who play a lot of different sports. You're, they could show UFC. They could show one championship fighting, women fight, uh, women playing tennis, golf, like all these things. Like there's big women sports stars in all these uh, women in soccer, right? Yeah. So uh, I think that I think that that niche, it, I think that market is growing. Also, the food looks delicious, guys. I looked through the Yelp and Google pages. I really looked into the food. The ribs look good. Those garlic chicken wings look delicious. The burger looks good. It's only sixteen dollars plus fries. It's not that bad. Yeah. No, it's true. And it is interesting that they didn't go v full vegan. They have like half a vegan menu, yeah. but they, you know, it's still a sports bar. People play sports they like some protein yeah. not to mention guys portland i do think is one of the best cities to open up this bar in. do i think that every city in america could sustain three of these bars i don't know maybe not yet like maybe in philly or boston it wouldn't be as popular as it is in portland seattle sf and who knows it could spark a trend where like exactly. maybe the sports are like 30 percent or 40 percent of a bar right now did you know andrew there are fifteen thousand registered sports bars in america a lot of people estimate there's another ten thousand that are not officially listed as a sports bar oh. that means out of twenty five thousand sports bars in america there is only one sports bra which is women's only so right. it goes to show you it is all a niche. right david we got to get into the cornman <laughs> section or should i say calm man section <laughs> yeah somebody said it's gonna fail yeah it might have a hard start for the first year but it's only gonna last like two years and then it's just gonna go down the drain nobody wants to see women's sports nobody wants to go to all women's sports bar it's got a strong niche man i think this guy's wrong yeah are they gonna rake in a revenue of like a million dollars every year maybe not but i think this bar it's not that large so the rent is not that much probably and it's probably not that hard to pack it out so i think it's got a really good chance why not for sure it's already starting spinoffs in seattle and stuff like that but it was the first one so shout out to jenny Wynn. somebody said isn't this discriminatory against men though because the male sports bars they don't say i'm male only but then this sports bar the sports bra they're saying they're female only isn't it reversed Sexist. <laughs> I think you have to look at this from like the legal standpoint and they do not discriminate against any type of customers. Men can go there. Fathers can go there. Bros could go there. Women could go. All types of people are welcomed at the sports bra, but it's just their theme is very specific. So 
Compare it to a different theme bar, a hockey theme bar. Walk into a hockey theme bar and ask them to turn on the NBA and see what they They say. They will look at you like you asked them to put on, I don't even know what on the screen. They'll look at you crazy. I'm saying like, so if you, I've walked into bars just as an Asian guy and I felt out of place and I felt like I wasn't welcome. You know what I'm saying? So I guess bars just have their theme and they have to, and they are, they are in their own right able to stick to that yeah. theme. Now, if she's mean to male customers or mean to a group of bros that walks in there, that's a problem. That's not right. But I don't think they are. Or yeah. they have no stories yet. So, you know, seems For like sure. I mean, that. listen, if it's one to 25,000, I mean, it's safe to say that one became default culture that an all-male sports bar, it's almost like par for course. People consider it the status quo to the point where they don't need to explicitly say they're male only. But in the 20-year history of the thing, they played like one female's like, Serena Williams match I mean, match listen, on. if you walk into a Boston Celtics theme bar and then you ask them to turn on the Brooklyn Nets game, they're also going to look at you like, come on, bro, what are you What are you asking? For? Somebody said it's a good, unique concept, but ultimately the long-term success is going to come down to the execution, the food, the drinks, the service, and the management of overhead costs. Guys, let me tell you this. Jenny Wynn is Vietnamese. So you know the food is going to be good, guys. Right. I know so many Vietnamese people who open up bars, whether it was in OC or even Seattle. Right. You're talking about the small business hustlers of hustlers. I'm telling you, Vietnamese fusion food or however they want to do it, the Nook Mom wings, how they get sticky and sweet. And, and they, didn't even put, fire. they didn't even put buttons on the menu yet. They didn't oh, even put Nook Mom they wings They didn't even in. release the fire on the world yet. Trust me. Um, this went into a whole discussion about women's sports in general. Someone said, women don't even watch sports, period. It doesn't matter if there's men playing, women playing. They only watch the men's sports when they're with their man or they're just doing it for the group event. And that's why women's sports fails. Quit trying to blame it on the men. Men is the biggest supporters of women's sports. Women just don't like sports, period. I, I feel like this whole conversation really sparked up in the past year after Bill Burr's stand-up comedy where he did call out women for not supporting the WNBA enough. But there's a lot of other women's sports that are supported by men and women. And there's obviously very big female sports stars, as we know. So what I'm saying is, yeah, maybe if this was a bar that was solely focused on one women's sports, like it was only like, I guess, women's basketball, maybe that would be a little bit tougher of a sell for people. But since you can walk in and see a bunch of different women's sports... That's not a bad idea. And I think that even though I will say that there is some truth to this in a macro aggregate sense, a sports bar doesn't need to exist for the macro societal metrics. It just needs to exist for its own crowd. It It doesn't need to be for like, like we said, maybe 1,000 of these women's only sports bars. It's starting to be like, you know, I don't know if there's a big enough market yet for it in 2023, but one in the world, certainly there is enough. <laughs> We're talking about one bar in Portland right now. Yeah. <laughs> it Somebody works. Said, it would only work in Portland, Seattle, like, or SF. It is insane that I think this many people don't think that you can have one bar of a niche. Yeah. I don't know if people have ever been to Portland. It works. Uh, there there could be three in Portland. Yeah. Somebody said, man, I'm so sick of the identity wars, man. How come we got political civil wars, race wars, class wars, and now we got a gender war on top of it? I'm all worn out. <laughs> It's not a war on men, man. I, I don't think this bar should be viewed as that way. And I think a lot of the guys commenting are commenting out of their gut reaction, their emotion being like, oh, this is good. They don't like men. Men haters, men yeah, haters, men haters. I think haters. it's just emotional internet comments. I do not think these people would ever even like step foot in, nope. in the city of Portland or the Northwest in general. Next time I go to Portland, and this was this spot's in downtown Portland area, like the Portland metro area. I'm going to go visit the sports bra. I'm going to go there, and I'm going to get the chicken wings. For sure. Somebody said, uh, yeah, man, they're going to collaborate with a lot of brands, too, because it's really something new in the society yep. in a space that was clearly just lopsided only for men. So they're going to be doing collaborations with uh, Nike, Buick, other large corporations that, mm-hmm. that like this message. Mm-hmm. Guys, like people don't just go to a sports bar just to watch sports all the time. And somebody <laughs> said... At the end of the day, there is also other identities layered on top of the fact that it's only for women's only since a lot of women's sports, particularly uh, the WNBA, is heavily associated with the LGBTIQ community. Mm -hmm. So it is a safe haven for feminism, the vegan community, half the menu is vegan, as well as other identities or dads who just want to take their daughters to feel empowered by women ownership, women-owned breweries, as well as the sports on the TV. 
Yeah, I think the only issue is like that it's not an issue yet and I haven't heard any bad stories, but like I guess if there are stories of like them being like the toxic feminists and all that stuff in this bar. Right, you know you're what I mean? saying that anytime there's like a bar that is going against the dominant culture, you just don't want to be mean to anybody from the dominant culture that chooses to visit the niche bar, minority right. bar either. So obviously I'm sure everybody there is very nice, but they do have to keep maybe their other patrons in check so that there's not like some type of, you know, heated argument or, or, or altercation that happens in there. But because it is, but it doesn't seem like that type of sports bar, man. It's, it's like really well lit. <laughs> like they're just, it's just not that serious. It shouldn't be that serious. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, for sure. I do not think that Jenny Wynn is going to run a business like that. I will say though, that sometimes even in other cities, Andrew, when you go into really hipster places and they don't think that you're a hipster, sometimes I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that. Guys, bars are very tribal. Let me tell you this. As an Asian guy who has walked in to just any regular sports bar in random cities no, sometimes as and a felt uncomfortable. Sometimes as an Asian guy, the only way you're going to feel comfortable is if you're wearing the best, most expensive jersey of the team that the sports bar is supporting. Um, Andrew, are we surprised that so many men on the internet came out against this? Obviously... You could just say their comments from somebody in like Podunk, wherever. They're never even going to step foot in Portland. I was a little bit surprised that so many people were rooting for the sports bra to fail. Yeah, I think they were just leaving a comment. They're not attacking the Google page or the Yelp page. Obviously, that is next level, like ridiculous behavior. However, just that's their gut reaction on a lot of these Instagram pages that probably have uh, primarily a male audience. But um, I guess I was a little bit surprised. I was a little yeah. bit surprised being like, dang, guys. Y'all really but, want this to fail? This doesn't really affect you at all. But you know, I thought about it, and we run a channel that a lot of people think is like niche or like about niche topics, even though the internet metrics are there for Asian American news or Asians in the West news. A lot of people feel like, oh, why don't you just talk about pop culture? Or why don't you talk about conspiracy theories? Or why don't you talk about anything that's more mainstream? And I'm just like, hey, man, I'm covering a niche that like needs to get exposed. So shout out to Jenny Wynn, yeah. man. She saw a niche in the market. Other people are doubting her. The bank wouldn't give her a loan because it seemed like a risky concept on their books, you know, mm. due to their, whatever, however they analyze it. And, um, you know, I just support it because we've been doing risky ventures our whole lives too uh, that a lot of people thought were going to fail. So, um, Andrew, what about an Asian-dominated sports bar? We're talking about ping pong, sumo, sapak, to crawl one championship fights instead of USC, because obviously USC is more Western. One championship is based in Singapore. It's more Asian. The Japanese baseball league, the CBA instead of NBA. What do you think? Uh, I think it could work in a couple cities too. And I think if it's not a gigantic Buffalo Wild Wings bar, you know, obviously that's a, a lot of costs and expenses to have. But I think it could work in a couple cities because I do, even though a lot of those sports are pretty niche, like, I think it would be cool to go watch one championship fights or like, you know, I don't know if I'd watch like a kendo match. I'm not really interested in that, but like, you know, yeah, a lot of the Asian sports, uh, I don't know if they could even get the feed from like the sports feed. They might have to get it on from online, but yeah, I think that would work in a few cities. Indian cricket. That could be a big market, Let's man. Do it. <clears throat> do it. Someone do it. At so the end of the day, let us know what you think of this. Um, I believe this is sparking the concept more. And even if it doesn't create only women's only sports bars around the country, I believe that more sports bars will begin to show women's sports. Yeah. So, Jenny Wynn, shout out to you. Go be successful. Go make your family proud. Um, continue expanding it because... You started a movement. So shout out to her. Man, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Let us know, are you for it? Uh, do you have this comment, that comment? Keep it civil. Until next time, we the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.